Robin is a harmony character who will contribute to the team in slightly different way. Besides providing buffs, she will also help deal damage in modest amounts. But if done with the right team composition, the total damage can be quite significant and consistent. That is using the follow-up team. Her entire kit seems to lead players to pair her with this team composition so that all of her abilities make more sense. Why is that? Don't worry, in this video I will explain Robin's kit and do a little analysis. But this time it's a bit different because for possible builds and teams I will cover them in another video. Because I don't want this video to be too long and make you feel sleepy. Okay, enough yapping and let's get started. Robin's basic attack is not particularly special, so we can just skip over them. As for her skills, she will grant all allies including herself a damage increase buff of 50% at talent level 10. As simple as that. And the duration of the buff will disappear after Robin's turn has passed 3 times. Somewhat similar to Ruan Mei. Now for her ultimate, it has an energy cost of 160. She could be considered the unit with the highest energy requirement after Argenti. Once activated, Robin will enter a certain state, increasing the entire team's attack by a certain percentage of her own attack, and advancing forward all team members' turns, except for Robin herself. In this ultimate mode, every time a teammate's attack, Robin will also attack and deal physical damage. What's unique is that these attacks are said to have 100% crit rate and 150% crit damage. So players don't need to worry about building crit on her, just focus on attack stat and she's good to go. Thanks to this, Robin's role can also become a sub DPS in the team. It's not mentioned here whether the crit damage can increase or if it's at a fixed number, but let's assume that Robin cannot gain more extra crit damage. Furthermore, there's no limit stated on how many additional attacks Robin can make, so I believe she will continue to attack infinitely as long as her teammates keep attacking as well, which is nice. Not only that, during the ultimate mode, Robin will also be immune to crowd control and won't be able to take turns or actions until the duration of her ultimate is finished. But how long is the duration? It all depends on the countdown that Robin herself summons on the action bar, similar to Nambi, for example. It will have its own actions and turns. And when the countdown turn is up, Robin's ultimate duration will end. This countdown has a fixed speed of 90, so its duration depends on the speed of the team and opponents. Knowing that Robin won't be able to take or even take a turn during her ultimate, it can be said that she also won't be able to generate skill points for the team and become a unit that is not very SP friendly when her ult is active. This makes her gimmick seems a bit underwhelming. But before making any rush conclusion, let's look at her other abilities, like her talents and traces, which might change something. Without any conditions, Robin will instantly provide an additional crit damage to the entire team. Then, for each teammate attacking an enemy, Robin will also gain an additional 2 energy. This may serve as a compensation for her high energy cost ultimate, and the fact that Robin can attack turns when her ultimate is active. And if you notice, this talent leans more towards her playing a supporting role for follow-up units, because the more often teammates attack, the more energy she gains. And only follow-up attackers are capable of attacking frequently enough or your DPS must be in a high speed in order to consistently proc this. But anyways, before concluding, let's now take a look at some of her traces. Is there something that makes this statement valid? For A2 at the beginning of the battle, Robin's action will be advanced forward by 25%, helping her to take turns first to activate skills and damage boost to the team before her teammates start attacking. Then for A4, during the duration of Robin's ultimate, the team's crit damage when performing follow-up attacks will increase by 10%. And now it's clear that Robin is more suitable for pairing with follow-up team compositions, although this buff could be considered a small one. Not only that, her A6 also ties her heavily to follow-up units because when Robin's health is below 50%, she will restore her own health by 2% of her max HP when her talent is active. Yes, you already know her talent. It relies on the frequency of the attacks that her team performs to restore both more energy and her health. And now it's no longer a mystery that Robin is a harmony specialized for characters relying on follow-up as their type of attack. After activating her technique, Robin seems to create a dimension that causes enemies to not attack her, but instead, follow Robin's movements. Upon entering battle, Robin will generate 5 energy per wave. This overall helps Robin to fill her energy bar. And now let's take a look at Robin's Eidolon. The first Eidolon actually serves to enhance Robin's personal damage. During the duration of her ultimate, every ally in the party who uses a skill ultimate or basic attack will gain one ornament stack, 
with each stack increasing their speed by 15% and can stack up to 2 times. Afterwards, Robin's attack multiplier will increase by 72%, and now the additional attack multiplier becomes 206% at level 10. As for Erdolin 2, it optimizes the buff from her talent by increasing the additional crit damage bonus for the team, and Robin now gains 3 energy. Since both Eidolon 3 and 5 are not too important to discuss, let's move on directly to Eidolon 4. Her Eidolon 4 makes her a harmony unit with the ability to provide team sustain. Each time she uses her ultimate, she will remove all crowd control debuffs from the entire team and simultaneously increase their effect resistance by 50%. It's specified here that Robin will only remove crowd control effects like freeze and imprison, but I think she cannot cleanse other debuffs such as dots like burn or bleed. And now we're on to her final Eidolon. When using her ultimate, she will also increase the team's all-type resistance penetration by 20%. Not only that, but the first 6 attacks that Robin performs during her ultimate will have their crit damage increased by 200%, or 3 times. Actually, Robin is already a solid performer at E0. So for F2P players, or those who don't want to invest too much in this unit, it's safe to pull her. But for some players who want to spend and unlock her Eidolons, I think Eidolon 2 is the complete package. The team gets more crit damage, and Robin also gets more energy, which helps her quickly fill her ultimate. By having Eidolon 2, you also automatically get the benefit of Eidolon 1, which increases Robin's personal damage by 72% and provides more speed to the team. And now that we know all of her abilities, Eidolons, and the best Eidolons, now how much additional damage output that can Robin deal? Let's do a little calculation. Let's assume our Robin is at level 80 and all her talents are at level 10. Then the light con she's using is S5 for tomorrow's journey. This effect adds 32% attack and additional 30% damage at maximum refinement. Her attack is 3600, and this already includes the attack bonus from the LC. When she uses her ultimate, the entire team, including Robin, gets attack buff, making her total attack now equals to 4700. Then she also gets an additional 50% damage, which means her damage boost multiplier is now 1.8. Let's also assume we're fighting against enemies weak to physical and at level 95. There are no damage vulnerabilities and the enemy is not in a broken state. The total damage Robin provides to each of her teammates when they attack is this. This is already a huge number, especially if the team composition consists of full follow-up units, allowing for 6 to 7 attacks in one cycle with Robin contributing to each attack. This brings Robin's total personal damage to 75,000. I think this is really impressive, especially now that this team can be considered to have a 4 DPS. Many people say that Robin is a combination of Ruan Mei and Ting Yun. Well, I have to disagree with this. The only thing that makes Robin similar to Ting Yun is the additional damage provided. Otherwise, I don't think they are alike. What makes Robin similar to Ruan Mei is her skill, which provides a damage boost for 3 turns. Ruan Mei cannot advance forward for her team, but Robin can, even for the whole team. Ruan Mei aims to break enemy toughness faster and delay their turns, while Robin's role is also a buffer, but more focused on contributing to damage, and her performance will be more optimal if the player uses a follow-up team composition. Let's compare a bit on the dot ratio team. Here the difference in their damage is roughly 11%. It's also worth noting that in this case, enemy toughness still exists, so Ruan Mei's damage break has not been included into the calculation. And the reason why Robin's is slightly superior is that she contributes damage to every attack Dr. Ratio makes, and Robin's damage can be considered more consistent because she doesn't have to break first. This comparison may or may not be accurate because I am only showing a single usage of Dr. Ratio's skill instead of the whole damage per rotation. But anyway, I hope this helps. Overall, I think Ruan Mei can be considered more stronger because the types of teams that can benefit from Ruan Mei's buff are wider, ranging from a regular DPS, break DPS, dot, and even follow-up attack teams. Robin is a character that can contribute damage to the team when they perform attacks, which can be a plus point for a harmony unit whose main task is usually only limited to providing buffs. Moreover, her role in the team is diverse, such as providing attack, damage boost, crit damage buffs, follow-up damage, advanced forwarding actions, and even serving as a sub DPS. She also has self-healing when her health drops below 50%, and if the team relies on shields for sustain and lack heals, there's no need to worry about Robin's health if she's close to fainting. Additionally, she becomes immune to crowd control when singing. 
However, besides these positives, what makes this character somewhat exhausting to play is her having the second highest energy cost in the game. Furthermore, although she's immune to crowd control, she can attack or use skills, meaning she can help generate skill points for the team, or even generate energy for herself. While she can still support any type of DPS, she shines brighter in a follow-up team, which might be a downside for players who have not invested at all in such team, but could be a plus point for those who have invested heavily in multiple follow-up characters. Another potential downside might only be felt by some players, but her song may sound beautiful at first, but after several patches following her release, it might become annoying and overshadow some of the banger battle us in Honkai Star Rail. Do we still need Robin? The answer depends on each player. If you have already heavily invested in follow-up units like Dr. Ratio, Topaz, or even Aventurine, you might need Robin to complement them and form a premium team. What if you already have Runmei or even Sparkle on one account? I think both of these harmony units are already sufficient. Considering Runmei's white team variation and ability to cover a certain team that Sparkle can't, such as Dot for example. Overall, Robin is not a must pull character, at least for now. Uh, what do you think? Write your opinion in the comment section and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and help this channel continue to grow by subscribing to Cat Bologna. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell because after this I will be discussing Boot Hill's kit. I will see you humans in the next video.